The secret behind exactly this is what I'm going to dig into. Chris Potter is of course one of my great idols. And I remember hearing him some 20 years ago in Amsterdam. Just crazy impressed and in awe over his sound. And especially how he played melodic lines. <laughs> Always playing these super fast amazing arpeggios but always in melodic context. I copied some of his playing but at that time I didn't get it. Then I checked out another great inspiration of mine, Bob Reynolds. Shout out to Bob Reynolds. Thank you for your amazing content and your inspiration. And he's another great Chris Potter fan. <laughs> And when I watch this clip, it strikes me what Chris Potter is actually doing. Chris Potter is always playing melodic lines in his solos. How it seems like Chris Potter is just ignoring the changes and then instead playing the melody all the time, or his own melody. It doesn't seem like he's thinking anywhere near that this is a G minor arpeggio, or thinking like this with a Chris Potter voice. <laughs> I'll just play up the arpeggio and down the scale. In the playing of Chris Potter, I don't really hear an irrelevant chord or scale. It's all linked into melodies. Really pretty and rather simple melodies, but how it's mixed up together is really incredible. This is from a recent recording, Chris Potter playing a blues at the Smokes Jazz Club. They're celebrating Al Foster's birthday. <laughs> Potter's playing this super simple line, but magically woven together of five different pentatonic scales. And going all in on the blues in this clear melodic repetition. Let's dig into how you can practice, learn and apply how to play crazy beautiful and connecting melodies in your solos. Let's go easy on ourselves and use the same blues as Chris Potter, blues in C. Examples in this video only play the first four bars of the blues. In the lesson manual on Patreon, I have added full form blues etudes on all the material plus lots more. The link is in the description. The method to learn this and get it thoroughly into your playing would be play small melodies in all the chords. Just start by playing the same phrase on all the chords. The final result should be that you're able to hear the melodies you're going to play and place them wherever you want, both in the chords and in rhythm. I mention rhythm because my inspiration comes from Chris Potter and he's always using extreme rhythm and Great rhythmical points. Now play the same phrase through the blues again, but change the rhythm and the phrasing of the lines. When changing the rhythm, you probably notice that repeating a rhythmical pattern is much stronger than just playing the notes repeated. <laughs> what Chris Potter is doing here. Playing these two phrases that kind of sounds like the same, but they're definitely not the same phrase. The trick is that triplet one which he plays in the same place in the bar, but the lines are totally different. One's up, one's down. Now try making lines in the blues where you repeat the rhythm. <laughs> Line has the exact same four notes repeated, but I move the pattern through the bars, placing it differently each time. <laughs> In this example you see a little bit more complex pattern but also added more complex rhythm. And the rhythm is still what you hear repeating, not so much the notes. So how would you train these melodic patterns, so the notes? I want to run through some scale exercises which will train the melodic aspects in your playing. <laughs> This pattern is one, two, three, one repeated on all the steps of the scale. It's very much about having these small melodies ready in your fingers. And this makes it so much easier to get out when you are actually going to play a solo. <laughs> Immediately I'm inserting the solo on this blues and you probably see that I directly changed the rhythm a bit. And we know by now that rhythm is the most important thing. When you're practicing scales, make it a goal for yourselves not to only practice them straight up and down. Mix these patterns with rhythm. <laughs> Change the rhythm every time you practice. When you practice your scales in different rhythmic patterns, you get this into your playing. This is what you'll play in your solos. Also, when you play your arpeggios in the scale, don't go boring on these either. Add rhythm. Mix up the notes in the pattern and change the rhythm. <laughs> Try 
try really hard to make this meaningful for your playing and not just another exercise you need to go through. I believe that if you have the words make it count in your mind when you're practicing, you force yourself to play like this all the time because you play what you practice. There are different ways to practice melody when you're training melodic playing. Looking at the melody from the piece earlier, I move this pattern through the chords, playing thoroughly into the chord, beginning all the phrases on the third of each chord. Try making a new line. <laughs> Start from a different chord note. Here I'm starting from the fifth of all the chords. You see that I changed the fourth bar a little bit. I get a little bit bored and start on the seventh there going down. When you know the line well, challenge yourself with adding more rhythm. <laughs> See where you can excite the line with extra rhythm and most importantly interesting rhythm. I do not want to leave you out in the cold here. Everything in this lesson, all examples and all exercises is added in the lesson manual. I have written tons of extra blues etudes for you in there that you can go play right now that you can get into this material. Find it on Patreon, the link is in the description. Try out the same principles when you are playing the chords now. Play the chords with the extra rhythm but add them into the form of the blues right away. <laughs> play vertically through the chords, so hitting the target notes moving down the chords, starting on the fifth of each chord note. And as you see, I cannot stop changing the rhythm just a little bit. When you change the rhythm, be aware of what you change, because you can repeat it and make the line even stronger. I've made another example because I really want to emphasize the rhythm. <laughs> one in the bar, moving over the bar line and adding these speed ups, adding 16 notes. But I stick to that basic pattern moving from the fifth of the chord down. Except this D minor, here I start something new, moving horizontally through the chords. If you play this melody it sounds kind of okay, but if you sing it it sounds kind of weird because there are big jumps in the melody. Normally you don't have melodies that have these big jumps. <laughs> Like this the line gets much more smooth. I'm playing horizontally matching each beginning note of each phrase to each other. Making sure that the melody of each phrase starts close to the melody of the previous phrase. And this makes the line much more singable and much more melodical. In these two lines you see that I use passing phrases. Phrases that are not directly in the chord but from out the scale. The passing phrases you can insert to get from one chord to another chord. <laughs> When moving through the melodic lines, the passing phrases give you a much more linear line. Here I give a hint of a little bit more advanced line, adding a bit of chromaticism. And there is such thing as chromatic passing lines. If you add chromatic passing phrases into your lines, it could sound like this. <laughs> I'm staying true to the linear movement of the beginning phrase, I make no bigger jump in the melodic line, and I'm still moving the thematic playing in the rhythm. I simply add passing phrases played over the dominant to the following chord, and I use this as chromatic phrases. A great way to train this is moving through chromatic dominance like this. <laughs> Take a small melodic phrase and move it either ascending or descending up through the chromatic dominance. And when you insert it into lines you will get results like this. <laughs> bit of everything. The very important repeating rhythms, of course the repeating melodic lines, and a bit of rhythmic movement. And then I add the chromatic dominance too. Everything is of course in the lesson manual. Tons of rhythmic, chromatic, vertical, horizontal lines, exercise and full etudes on the blues form. Get the lesson manual on Patreon, the link is in the description. I think I never get enough of Chris Potter. If you want to dig into more of his melodic basics, you must check out the amazing Chris Potter in this video. Play music, have fun.